regarding police reforms, uh, I want to thank Dr. Pruitt uh, when he was speaking about justice for setting the tone about what needs to be done in town and uh, uh, Councilwoman uh, Rice for mentioning specifics that need to, uh, or, or the need for specifics that need to come about. Um, in order to move us forward in terms of various options, I reached out to the manager. Uh, first off, I'd like to talk about uh, vest cams for our officers. They're a topic we've studied for quite a while. And when it comes to police accountability, they create an interesting situation where they protect as much as they expose. And in a town like ours, when you have a police force that are dedicated to ensuring reforms such as community policing and de-escalation um, and uh, making sure those reforms are followed, I thought it would be a tremendous this benefit to our officers to have the ability to have a video backup if and when a complaint arises. So as the council is aware, the, uh, but the public might not be, we've spoken at length about this idea before and the cameras are part of our capital spending plan. So as I mentioned, I did reach out to the manager and he said he spoke with the police chief about the department adopting them. And I'd like to just uh, hear from Dean uh, how the idea is being received and what the next step on implementation would be. And if he wants to answer that one real quick, I can just move on to the next topic. I have a comment on that. Um, the the, the can we, can well, I, Henry, can we hear from Dean first? Yeah, I just wanted to hear from Dean. I'm not done with my uh, uh, police reform topic. I just wanted to hear from him about that one. Yeah, no, thank, thank you, Councilman. I, again, I've been engaged in discussions with the chief over the last several weeks about body cameras and let me make it uh, unequivocally clear that the police department is in favor of body cameras, always has been, always will be. It will just serve to prove the, the great work that the men and women of the police department are doing. Uh, I do have proposals for body cameras as well. There are some varying prices. Um, so we, I have that information from the chief of police. And again, I think it's something we can do and move forward with. Um, we just have to, um, uh, through capital, um, allocate funds to purchase a few things, such as the cameras, such as a server, uh, and some other uh, incidentals to, to get this up and running. Good. And um, I've also been in touch with Jersey City. They had a novel implementation that they instituted in 2017 where they used the standard issue iPhones they had with an app based uh, that was secured to the police department that seems to be compliant with all New Jersey's rules. So that might obviate the need for some of the capital spending. But my uh, plan would be as long as they're in favor, and it seems they are, that we can have something up and running, uh, at least to vote in principle by the end of the year and get these things outfitted soon. Uh, the next issue I wanted to bring up regarding police, a lot of the members of the public don't seem to be aware of a lot of the uh, uh, rules and regulations and the updates to our policies that New Jersey has had. And I wanted to thank the manager for gathering the information when it was requested. I know people have started to take a look at uh, things like use of force in light of current events, and uh, that's certainly important. Obviously, for us on council and especially the manager, it's not a new issue. And I've requested reports, and TNIC does make them public and has done so for years, from then Chief Carney, and certainly had no complaints when I saw we had zero sustained use of force force complaints under Chief Carney, and when last I checked, that's now the same under Chief O'Reilly. So I wanted to ensure that, uh, first off, the public has access to all those updates and uh, the policies that the manager has sent around, and uh, in terms of the ones from the Attorney General and TPD, which have enabled us to create community policing and outreach and uh, the things which have led to these results, because it's not an accident that our police department is doing a good job in this area. So if the manager can speak quickly to uh, what the uh, updates are, and especially if you could talk to the way the uh, civilian review board operated within our form of government in the past and how the use of force is created and by whom, uh, I think it would behoove the public um, and be beneficial. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. The, uh, the Civilian Review Board um, was disbanded in 2010 due to inactivity. Um, so that could be something that Council wants to consider uh, reinstituting and uh, getting that board together. But because of uh, inactivity, um, that board was disbanded in 2010. And as 
I previously mentioned to council, uh, since 2014, the police department received four excessive force complaints. Uh, just to explain quickly, two of those complaints exonerated the officer indicating the actions were lawful and proper. Uh, one was not sustained, meaning there was insufficient evidence to prove or disprove uh, the complaint. And the uh, fourth one was administratively closed um, at the complainant's request. So again, for the last six or seven years, we have had no sustained excessive force complaints, which I think is a uh, is very good. Um, you know, people always have the option of filing a criminal complaint or taking civil action, uh, no matter the outcome of the internal affairs investigation or professional standards investigation. So that is always an option. And, and again, they are pretty much non-existent with those type of criminal complaints and or civil complaints. Uh, it's also important to me to just say that, you know, 25% of our police force resides in Teaneck, which I also consider to be a very good percentage. Uh, the current authorized strength is 95. Police officers and 19 are African-American, 20 are Hispanic, and one is Pacific Islander category. That equates to 41% uh, minority status, again, which is very good. Um, again, we follow the directives of the Attorney General guideline when it comes to use of force, um, energy devices such as tasers, policies regarding the discharge of firearms, which, again, we haven't done in 30 years. Uh, the Teaneck Police Department also has an early warning system that we use as a management tool, and, and that's there to detect patterns and trends in police conduct before the conduct escalates. And, and it serves not only to increase public safety and public confidence in law enforcement, but it also assists our, our officers through early intervention. Uh, we also have a clear citizen complaint information report that's available online on the township's website it's available at the police department so we, we try to make it as accessible as possible for anyone that feels that uh, the police department did not follow their policies rules and regulations uh, right now we have two officers that are assigned to community policing one is a lieutenant one is a police officer and they continue to provide some excellent resources and programs to the public not as many as we used to be able to do public i'm sorry community policing was originally by one lieutenant and six police officers. So uh, we're down to two, but again, they still uh, do some excellent programs, proud of them for that. But again, everything um, as far as use of force is strictly covered by the Attorney General. He recently put out a uh, directive on, on chokeholds. So that just came out. The police department updated their use of force policy. So it's all covered from their end. You know, one of the things on this I think it's very important, Dean and, and, and uh, Keith, is to realize you know, the public, you know, there's a lot of things that people put out there, like uh, there are very little control because of the police chief bill of rights of what council and mayors have, uh, not only in our form of government, but all over New Jersey. Uh, the, de the manager is the appointing authority in our town. The council has nothing to do with the parking or uh, promotions. The second piece comes down to the Community Relations Advisory Board. You know, the reason why it was disbanded in 2010 is because the Internal Affairs Department handles everything that's happening in a police department, again, by state statute uh, and the Attorney General guidelines. Uh, the police chief does not report to the council. It reports to the, their as actual boss is the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office. And that Bergen County prosecutor is appointed by the governor. And the person who has the most say in implementation as well as hiring practice is, is the senators in, our, in, in Bergen County. Uh, we have two Republican and three Democrats who are, have senatorial courtesy when these appointments are made. Um, it's a very uphill battle for any council person, any sitting council person, mayor in any municipality. Uh, to implement reforms. Those reforms need to happen at the state level. The Attorney General, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to say, is, the, is someone that I know very well, and I think that he's been uh, leading the nation in police reforms. But that doesn't mean that we still don't have a long way to go. Uh, and one of the things that I hope to see happen in the, in the years to come is, is that, you know, internal affairs departments don't police their own internal affairs departments. Um, you know, it's almost like a, count, a council investigating itself. It doesn't make any sense. So, you know, one of the things that, that they should be looking at, and this has been floated for a long time, 
uh, and hopefully now is the time that it happens, is like you have a pool. So if you have an internal affairs department, uh, you know, Teaneck's police department doesn't uh, investigate Teaneck police. They would investigate another town like Tenafly or uh, Bergenfield and vice versa. If a complaint happened from somewhere else, their internal affairs would come under uh, uh, and, um, you know, investigate other people. Because the way it's set up, it's just, you know, people go into inter internal affairs and then they move up and then they become something else, uh, you know, to move up the ranks. They're just doing the job. And, you know, the public, not to saying that they're not doing the job right or wrong, I have no idea because I've never been a part of an investigation. But for the perception from the public, imagine if I did something wrong and I said, hey, guys, don't worry, I investigated myself, everything is fine, right? Uh, I don't necessarily think that my opposition or even my supporters would, would kind of take that. So I, I, I hope that, you know, that, that there, are, there are a lot of long due overdue reforms that happen. But understand for the public and my citizens to understand that under state statute and under the, our form of government, you can scream at us as much as you want. There are very little statutory power that we have to make change other than literally uh, not funding the police, which is uh, a mistake in my idea. It's like it doesn't make sense to, 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 to throw the baby out with the bathwater in, in, in those circumstances. Um, that's my two cents. Um, the next item on the, are you done, Keith? I would just say that the most important thing you said is that you should take those words to heart because he knows where the reform needs to happen. And he's pointing you literally where you need to go in order to make those reforms. And uh, us as a council too, we can't do all the reforms people are screaming at us to create, but they can be done on the state level. And that's where it needs to be done but we can't do things on our own and I hope we'll continue that. You can advocate for it. That's exactly what I talked about. That's what you need to advocate for. If you yes. want real reform, that's what you need to advocate for. Number 11 is 12, as well as 12. I guess perhaps it would have been great for uh, Councilman Kaplan and I to collaborate, but I just wanted to make sure that these items were listed on our agenda so that the public could have a clear understanding of where we stand um, with our police department. And I'm really happy that our town manager was able to, you know, speak to some of the specifics and the, the statistics that guide our police department um, and why we don't have a current civilian review board. Um, and then, Mr. Mayor, your clarification of those points as well. But I think that in this climate, it's just very important for our community to be able to ask the questions. A lot of residents have been asking questions of, um, you know, the civilian view board because we hear this in the community. We hear it on the news constantly. Um, but to know that it may not necessarily exist where we live, but as was mentioned, these things are guided by our, our county prosecutor's office as well as our attorney general, then where we need to guide our um, advocacy. Really appreciate just to be able to have the conversation. Um, and also in terms of actually looking, and Mr. Manager, you could probably speak to the um, police task force and where the community would be able to have access to view uh, our task force, the use of force policies, and where the community can be directed to find um, answers to some of the questions with regard to how we police here in this community. Yeah, what, what I, and, uh, I I just wanted to say thanks if I can for uh, bringing it up. I, I obviously didn't realize before the agenda came out that uh, you'd be talking about those topics. I had reached out to the manager and uh, the police department and several other towns in the last couple of weeks uh, talking about this. So, uh, yep, but if as have I. Yeah, and in uh, addition to the prosecutor's office, I've been speaking with the, our prosecutor as well um, in terms of other options, in terms of um, bias training, you know, you know, what takes place with our police force, how we can have that bias training uh, for residents as well. So as council leaders, just make, knowing that we play a very important role and the tone that is set in this government and, and our institutions, and we have an opportunity here to set examples and commit ourselves to prioritizing racial equity and just wanted to make sure that we uh, set the tone that this was indeed something that was a priority for our community. Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks. Um, and, uh, you know, I was happy we can move forward on a couple points uh, today. And if you're, you know, uh, amenable, I'd love to work with you on uh, future items. Mm -hmm. But I think that, that I think, um, right, Mr. Manager, we have discussed most of these items. Um, and I don't know if there was anything further that you needed to add. No, I mean, do you guys want to put back the civilian complaint review board or don't? 
I think that's well, the, only I, the, the status of it is it's disbanded. The reason why it was disbanded in 2010 was because, uh, you know, the people who are on the board, you know, everything was an internal affairs investigation. So you didn't get to see uh, what was happening. Even as a council member, think about this, as a council person, like there are very few times that discipline got to us. It's handled internally, right? And that's designed by state statute. So if you want the reforms, the reforms need to be in the state statute. I agree with you, bias training is great. But again, I use the example, you know, if somebody asked me if I did something wrong and investigate myself, are you gonna listen to me, right? And those, are, those can only be done at the state level through state statutes. That, that our ability to- Absolutely. Well, I, I really hope somebody says something because I, I, I think that, you know, in the 12 years that we, everybody has been on, you know, like there, there's been times where I think, um, you know, I, I don't know the right thing. That, I don't know which way we should go, but I know we have to go somewhere because the whatever is going on is not working. And that is the thing to approve accountability uh, for the for the policing needs to happen here for it to be in right? And I use the example a lot over the last few weeks, which is, you know, I understand that I don't understand what it means to be African American, but I also understand something is that, you know, after uh, a synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh or after a synagogue, uh, the, mosque, uh, the mosque shooting in uh, New Zealand, the police come to protect our houses of worship. Okay, it's very different for my African-American uh, constituents who see that, okay, who are you gonna call uh, when these things happen, right? And that's why this is an uncomfortable conversation for some, but it's a conversation that needs to happen. But again, it needs to happen on a state level. Like it, you, we, the Civilian Complaint Review Board that we had, the reason why they didn't work is because there's no state statute for a Civilian Complaint Review Board. And that's what needs to happen. You know, and, mm -hmm. and I really hope that you guys pass a resolution, encourage our assembly person, all three senators uh, and the entire Senate delegation to move forward on this because that's what needs to happen. Uh, you know, well, we have to- Well, Mr. Forward. Mayor, yeah, uh, I was gonna say, I, I, go ahead. I was just gonna say two things, the internal affairs, not be, you know, being able to investigate yourselves and really, you know, it's a good thing and a bad thing where, you know, you don't have the mayor being able to tell somebody to go give somebody a ticket or go giving, you know, I believe in the police uh, chief bill of rights, but it also <laughs> accountability. And right now the accountability and the people who are the judge, jury and executioner, what, so to speak in, I mean, uh, the poor choice of words, I'm saying the, the, the <laughs> terms of discipline when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, uh, relic, uh, um, to uh, enforcing police rules comes the only institution that is is, is there to protect us. So I, think I think that's e exactly right. And uh, one of the reasons that I focused uh, first on best cams and getting information to the public is those are things we can actionalize on a local level. Again, and but if I, they don't want to release the data, the, the data, they that, don't That is it. correct. That is, these are the issues, like, you know, this is yes. the issue. It's like, and, and, that, and that is- happening, right? There's tapes missing. There's pieces missing of the data. That's absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. The next, notified. and it's not the next step. On but you guys every week can send letters saying what's going on, what's the police reform bill, and look at, at, on the federal level, they are taking certain steps, creating a national database of, of police officers who've been who've been kicked off of for infractions is a great start. But you and I, everybody here knows the disciplinary factors and the way. Uh, uh, it's not only civil service gun or New Jersey state labor law, we don't get to see any of the stuff that's happening. And this is something that I hope you talk about in the future because the reforms will only come when there is accountability. And right that's now, right. And I, the, the and I think don't provide for accountability. I think in order to lead here, we first need to set the framework. We need to be able to have the items that, uh, you know, the recordings and whatnot. And the next step, you're absolutely right. We need to work on the policies. We need to work on the procedures. And in order to do that, it's not going to be coming straight from us. It's going to be coming with pressure on our representatives uh, at the state level in order to craft policies that work appropriately. And I, you know, I cannot stress enough that's you need to listen to where certain uh, points that we can do on the local <laughs> level, and that's what I've been trying to uh, push on the local level, and then take the mayor's lead uh, 
in order to get the people on the state level to let what we do on the local level actually work. Yes, yeah, and that's um, why I think it's important to have this conversation. Let, let me comment on that just a little bit. I think wherever it is, if it's a state level or local level, let's say it's the state level, the people need to hold those people accountable for what happens. And if if the senators and the and the congressmen are not doing the police brutality, we need to vote them out. I couldn't agree that. with you more, but if the question comes down. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, but the, the, again, when we're talking, I just want because again, like as a mayor, you know, people think that you have you control the police force. You know, it doesn't. It's not set up that way in New Jersey. You know, we 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 statutorily he has his bill of rights, and statutorily he works for the prosecutor's office. We don't get to see investigations. We don't get to see data. We don't get to see any of that stuff. And we're the elected officials who end up having to answer to our citizens. Now, we're very lucky to have a great police force, as I said before and over. But this uh, issue of reform that needs to take place, um, it's, a, it's a very big conversation. And I just hope that the people uh, who are on this call understand um, correctly what, who are the appointing authorities as well as who makes the rules for the police. You know, they follow the attorney general guidelines, which is nothing something that Tina Council puts together. Um, so with that, if, the, if that's when it's done, we'll move. Uh, right now, I've tentatively set up a, a forum to discuss police and community relations in TNEC. Uh, I plan on having members from the TNEC Police Department, including the chief, uh, local clergy, uh, some members of council, the county prosecutor, uh, the county sheriff, and members of the uh, the public or residents. Uh, more information will follow. Uh, I'm going to um, get that information out either tomorrow or Thursday. They have to speak to the chief in the morning, and it's going to be held by a Zoom uh, a Zoom platform. So we, we want to open up these uh, lines of communication, listen to uh, our residents, listen to the community, hear from our clergy, uh, hear from the chief law enforcement officer of the county, uh, Prosecutor uh, Musella. Uh, the sheriff Anthony Curidan and our police chief. Um, so I'll get that information out within the next day or two.